Daiquiri asked me, what would a Big 12 national championship do to the state of college football? Would it shake the already frail future of college football? Well, the future is not frail of college football. I'm not sure what that meant. However, if a Big 12 team won the national championship, yeah, it would shake college football in the best of ways. Sometimes you need the tree shaking. Sometimes you just have to do it. Storm comes through, you got dead branches up there. Sometimes you need to shake the tree. Well, if a Big 12 team, and I don't really care who it is, won the national championship, think about what that would be. So I have called the Big 12 America's College Football Conference. And the reason I've called it that lately is because I've listened to all of you. And I agree with a lot of what you guys say. So a lot of you have told me you're tired of all these coaches moving. Brandon Marcello did a really good feature the other day, and it had a startling number in the feature. One in every three coaches in college football changed jobs this past cycle. Unacceptable, first off. It's ridiculous. And secondly, a lot of you claim you're tired of it. I am too. A lot of you claim you're tired of players moving around to the degree they do. I'm tired of it too. I I think in a perfect world, they have the freedom to do it, but the structure is such that they don't really have much incentive to do it. We don't have that right now, though. I'm tired of it just like you are. A lot of you are tired of watching the traditional practices of recruiting thrown out the window and it come down to just insane bidding wars. At this point, someone's riding around in their car in Tacoma, Washington, yelling, they were always bidding wars. Yes, in some cases they were. Never like this. Never ever like this. Not even close to being what it is now. And a lot of you claim you're tired of that. A lot of you claim you're tired of there being not enough competitive balance in college football. So lack of competitive balance, tired of the bidding wars, tired of players acting like mercenaries, tired of coaches acting the same way. If you're tired of those things, the Big 12 is your conference because that's where the least or most of those things are in supply, respectively. The Big 12, coaches don't move all over the place like they do in other conferences. Players don't do it either. In fact, a lot of their players get offers to leave and they stay. Because culture is at, at, at as high a premium in the Big 12 as in any conference top to bottom in America, to me. The continuity of culture is in more abundance in the Big 12. It has to be. They don't go in four- and five-star territory in recruiting like the big boys do. So they know they have to supplement that somewhere else. But it's not like that in the Big 12. The things, in other words, that people like me claim that we love or loved about college football, they got it in the Big 12. Now, what you may not have is you may not have perennial star-studded litter the NFL draft next April type teams. You may not have that. You don't need that to have high-level entertaining football played. The competitive balance goes without saying. It's been that way out there for a number of years. Here's the bad news. The bad news is with the new format, you have greatly lessened the chance that anybody ever comes out of this conference and wins the national title. Washington almost did it last year. Washington wasn't in the Big 12, but Washington was an example of a team like that that could seemingly come out of nowhere and make a run. But the run Washington had to make was win two games. Once they get in, win two games. These teams may have to win four in the future, three or four. And, you know, the the formula is go beat teams that may be more talented than you, but they aren't as developed as you are. Well, here's the problem. When you get in the playoffs, you face both. You face teams like Georgia, where they got the best talent roster in the country, And they've also got all that team building down pat, too. They got the culture piece down pat, too. So they're they're sort of impenetrable as a team like you are. The difference is their players are going to have a long career on Sundays, and a lot of yours aren't. And you just you can't count on culturing your way. You can't count on fundamentaling your way through the playoff. You you can do it. In the Big 12 regular season, you can do it. I love watching it. I I love everything about that. I'm just saying the reality of the sport is – There are a lot of really fundamentally sound teams that are insanely talented in the playoff. And it's much harder. It's much harder to navigate your way through that. But think about the coaches in this conference, too. Chris Kleiman, Kyle Whittingham at Utah is now a Big 12 coach. Lance Leipold is an extreme fast riser at Kansas. Matt Campbell, a mainstay at Iowa State. 
Mike Gundy has been there forever. Sonny Dykes at TCU played for a national title two years ago. So you ask me, what would happen if a Big 12 team won the national title? Well, I'd celebrate. That's what I'd do. Now, let, like I said before, don't let it be Iowa State. Because if it's Iowa State, this just becomes... This just becomes a fan account, basically. This really ceases to be a national college football show, and it's just an Iowa State fan account. We're not there yet. You know, could be one year, could be two years. I'm not there yet. 